Hello and welcome back to my Safari Toy Box. I've got Officer Judy Hops with me from the Zootopia Police Department and today I'm going to finish the build exercise for this toy box. Last time I finished up the terrain and the next thing I want to do is add the road around the toy box. And the road needs to come right where this starting pad is. So the first thing we want to do is pick this piece up. <laughs> And uh, we'll go ahead and just move it out of the way. I'm going to put it over here for right now and we'll put it in its final resting place later. And then we'll go ahead and move the boom box under the terrain. So that's out of the way. Alright, I think the easiest place to begin with the uh, road is for the bridge over this canal here. Get to my screen grab. Okay. And we need to go to the racetrack pieces. And we're going to begin with this piece here. And I want to line it up so that it's on the inside edge of that river, right? Like you see it there. And then in this direction, it's going to be just over the terrain seam. So just like that. And we'll go ahead and style this. This is going to be for the bridge. So I'm going to use the uh, Lilo's Tropical Paradise theme and I'll set my theme for that. Just a nice little wooden bridge going over top of the uh, water here. We'll put two of those down and then we need a slope to get down uh, onto the main level. And we'll just use the arched track for that. All right. And then I'm going to put down a racetrack here on this side. And we'll change the theme now. And the Pride Lands theme I wasn't really happy with, so I'm actually going to use the X Games theme. It's just a nice dirt road theme that I just think looks really good here. Kind of matches the setting pretty well. All right, and now we'll go ahead and put in the racetrack start. And I want the race to begin going that direction. All right. Next piece will be a long piece, and let's go the direction of the track around the toy box. So I want to connect that up like that. And then we're going to put in a turn, and I think we're going to use the regular size turn here. So that piece is going to go like that. That piece will go like that. And already something is not lining up right. Oh, I missed two pieces. All right, so this needs to go over a little bit. I need to put in, I think this is a little bit too far, but I need to put in a couple of short pieces here. And then this. <laughs> Sorry about that. Missed those. That's looking better. I knew that was too close to that rock there. Okay. Back to the very long track, and we're going to put one of these in here on the end of that, followed by a medium, followed by another turn. Initially, I did not have any kind of racetrack or road in here. And as I was working in the toy box, I realized a road would kind of help players be able to find their way around here. I'm going to place four of these, by the way. So one, 
two, three, four. A road gives you a landmark that can be very helpful when you're trying to navigate this thing. And I thought, well, if I'm putting down a road anyway, it's not going to cost too much more extra memory to put in the racetrack start piece. And that gives you kind of a fun activity to do. So that kind of scoots between those two hills. So I like that. Then we're going to put in three of these very long pieces. One, two, three. Followed by the very tight turn. Okay. And then along. And then we're going to do another bridge. So we'll come to our arch, put that in. We'll go ahead and change the theme back to the Lilo and Stitch theme. Let's see, is it faster to go this way? I guess it's about <laughs> the same either way. I'll set that to be my theme. Kind of adds an interesting obstacle. It's not a difficult thing. It's a very simple looking obstacle, but when you hit that at high speed, it, especially coming around that tight turn, if you don't hit that square on, <laughs> you're going to go uh, flying either off in that direction or off in that direction toward that hole. So that simple little obstacle makes that look pretty challenging. All right, and then we'll put in another long. Like that, we'll change the theme back. Here we go. The other thing that's really beneficial about having this road, by the way, put in a racetrack right here to get around that hole up there. The nice thing about having the road is that uh, it helps you get back to camp because no matter where you are in the toy box, if you find the road, just follow the road and that'll take you back to camp. So that was another reason why I really wanted the road in here because that would help players figure out how to get back to the starting point in the toy box. Alright, so that comes around like that. And then we're going to do two of these very long pieces. Followed by a long. And then our final turn, but since we're already on these pieces, let's put these in next. So we're going to put in three of these very long pieces here. One, two, three. And now the turn should fit in here perfectly. If I did everything correctly, and I did. All right, so there is our road around most of the toy box, except for the canyons. Okay, next let's build the camp where Mickey's Safari begins. And there's a lot of different pieces scattered from a lot of different uh, drawers. So to save a little bit of time, I placed the pieces that I need below the terrain. So as I pick these up, you can note which drawer they're in and what the piece is called, and then just scroll until you find that, assuming, of course, you've unlocked that particular piece. So the tower, we're going to line up with the water going that way, and I'm going to set this back about three blocks. That's two. That'll be three, because we need to leave room for the power switch in front of that. So there is our antenna. 
And then we're going to pick up this, uh, well, let's do this one first. This will be the roof for the shed. And for this, I want to set this back about like that. So this will be about two blocks back off the road. And then for the walls of the shed, we're going to use this piece from the blocks drawer. A short block wall. And if we put this up under here like that, yeah, that's too far out. It needs to be oriented this way. And we'll go ahead and style this. I think we go left and we don't have to go too far. We hit this metal too. I'll set that to be the theme. So that looks kind of like the metal siding for a shed. We'll put uh, two on that side. Two on this side. This is where the player will find uh, the vehicle that they can use. So there is that. Now for the tent, this is from the Lone Ranger playset. And you'll find that in the decorations drawer. And we're going to line this up across from the uh, tower there for the radar. And we're going to put the first one here. I'm going to put the next one about there. Yeah, went one spot too far. So like that. The fire pit is from the Rise Against the Empire. It's from the Ewok Village pieces. That's going to sit here like this. And then the start pad, we'll put that right up here about like that, centered on the campfire. And if we pick up the tent and put it down and then go left in the decorations drawer, we don't have to go too far before we hit these barrels. And so we're going to put some fuel barrels over here on side of the shed. We go a little bit further, we find some boxes. So we'll put these out over here. Uh, about uh, like that. And there is our camp. Okay, now in this hole over here, in this canyon, this big hole that we built, my original plan was to add a hidden poacher's ranch for a side quest. And unfortunately, after I put in the photography quest, I just don't have the memory for that. But I'm going to build it anyway, and I'll leave it to you to add this side quest on your own if you want. And if you're on a system that has enough memory to handle it, just set up a mission giver and have it invoke an enemy wave generator or two connected to some locators around the ranch down here in the hole. And uh, after you talk to the mission giver, then just jump in and fight the enemies. And if you're not sure how to do that, the logic would basically be the same as the quest that I built in my Phineas and Ferb episode number 10, Meep's Quest. I'd recommend using the Western Outlaws from the Lone Ranger playset for the enemies. And for the ranch itself, if you come up to the Lone Ranger building pieces under buildings and go left, there is a ranch here. So we can drop this down here <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to orient mine about like that. That puts the ranch in. And to add a few decorations around it, again, I dropped a <coughs> piece that I would like to use over here. So we're going to use this uh, water tower. 
City Water Tower. That's out of Building Sets Group 2. We're going to drop this over in this back corner and we'll put it with the pipe on the outside like this back in that corner. And if you hit ZL on my Wii U for the info button, that tells you uh, it's a, just a city themed play, play set piece. So I don't believe it's tied to any particular um, play set. And if we come back to the decorations drawer, go back to those fuel barrels. I already used this one, so might as well use that again. Because that doesn't cost us anything. And you could spin that around and put another one there, or if you have the memory, you can go ahead and add uh, an extra fuel barrel tower there. But there's the poacher's camp. And I'll add in a few other things around that here. But the last thing I need to do is add the plants and rocks. That's going to take a while, so I'm going to do that offline. And then I'll be back and I'll show you the end result. Okay, I'm back. And let's do a quick flyover so you can see which pieces I've used and where I've placed them. So all of these plant clusters, of course, are from the plants drawer. They're the first nine pieces in the drawer. So I've got one, that one sitting down there on that plateau like that. A lone tree up there. And I'll just kind of show you what pieces I've got. I don't think I really need much commentary here. You can pause this video at any time just to take a closer look. Try to position the pieces exactly where I did if you want. Or you can mix it up and place yours anywhere you want, really. Well, let's see. Head down this edge of the toy box since we're already here. As you can see, I didn't butt those up right next to each other and put a whole line of them because you don't really need that. I really wanted the terrain when you're down at ground level to kind of look like it goes off in the distance. So that's why I have a straight edge there. I'm not using any cliff pieces and just a few plants along the edges. I've got this one sitting out here. You can kind of note the terrain seams there and that gives you a little bit of an idea for spacing. And then you'll also notice I've placed a few of these terrain pieces down. These are the same ones I used last time, that step cliff over at the mountain over there. And I put one on either side of the road so it kind of looks like they split the rock in order to make room for the road. And I'll come back to the left there in a little bit. And the exact placement of these doesn't really matter, they're just decorations. So if you're a little off from what I have, if you want to put in fewer decorations or a little bit different ones, that's okay. It's not really that critical. The one thing you do not want to do is add a lot of them because this in uh, this toy box, as you can see from the Sky Dome even, that uh, there's not a lot of stuff here. So it's not supposed to be choked thick with foliage and rocks and things. You want to make sure that uh, you leave a lot of empty space. You're just putting in a few pieces for decorations. And I added some two of these back to back here. And I added two of them back to back and I did use a memory hit to put this one in. I probably should should have just used this one back to back to save a little bit of memory. But those rocks there and this one here just kind of keep the player a little bit honest when you're racing the toy box. So you kind of have to swerve to avoid those rocks. And the path of the road then makes a little bit of sense. Let's see up here we have 
one plant on that corner. We've got a plant up here on the top of this hill. A couple little plants over here next to Pride Rock. And then next to the road there. Nothing up on top of this hill. Over here I added a couple more of these little block pieces. I put some pieces around the uh, watering hole over here. You can see which ones I used and where I put them. And then coming back to camp along the river. Um, I put a lot of pieces here along the river because plants obviously are going to grow more of them and thicker along a place where there's water. So that's what we have here. Just makes sense. I'll try to spin the camera around a little bit so you can kind of get an idea of the spacing. from both sets of directions. Okay, and then we'll go uh, along here, I guess, next. A little lone tree out there. A couple little trees over here. And going down the side of the toy box there. Here we get out toward this little cliff overlooking the lower area with the road going up out of the uh, lower flatlands here. trees up here. I did put uh, a couple of trees down there in the uh, poachers camp in their ranch. up here on top of this hill and then out along this edge and then down around the uh, watering hole down here in the lower area And there we go. I think that's pretty much everything that I put down. Mainly the plants and some rock clusters out of the terrain category. 
So now we'll go ahead and style these. So I'll select one, open up the styling menu, and we're going to go to the left, and I'm looking for Pride Land. And I'm going to theme all. It says, are you sure? I'll say yes. Of course, I have my power disk down on the base for Simba's Pride Lands. And there we go. That looks really, really good. Those uh, plants are perfect because they match Pride Rock over there. And that's why I highly recommend getting those power discs if you can find them. All right. And with that, the build exercise for this toy box is done. Next time, we'll hook up the logic for the main photography quest. Before you go, I want to thank you for watching and remind you to subscribe to my channel by clicking my photo in the lower right corner. That's all for me today. Take care.